Alright, uh, welcome back, how do, blah blah blah. Alright, this is, uh, one of the first of a couple of tutorials that I'm going to be putting up on how to use the CryBlend exporter for Blender to get skeletal animation out of Blender and into CryEngine. Uh, there are a few things that you need to know. Uh, according to the bones or the skeleton in Blender, Y is not forward, Z is not up, X is not off to the side. According to your mesh, it is. So, uh, follow the docs, uh, model your geometry like you're supposed to, facing the Y, you know, not... Uh, don't hit one and expect to see the front of your model. You actually should be looking at the back of your model if you hit one. Um, anyway, that aside, uh, let's get started here. First thing we want to do, we got our, uh, we're going to get rid of, well, we're going to just move our camera and lamp to a uh, different layer, get that out of the way. Um, been thinking for, uh, uh, been thinking about it to try and figure out what would be the best way to uh, do this, go about it, and rather than uh, have a complete model to muck things up, because I mean this isn't a tutorial on how to rig or anything of that nature. Mm, excuse me. This is a uh, tutorial on using CryBlend. So all we're going to do is we're going to export a skeleton with a plane here. Uh, I'm not worried about UV mapping or the material. It just needs to have a UV map and a material. Alright, we got that. We've applied our scale. If you don't apply the scale, it's going to complain about the uh, bounding box being too small. Um, while we're doing this, I'm going to explain a few things. Um, errors that you may or may not see. Uh, one, uh, let me see if I can remember exactly what it was, uh, that gum for the life of me, I can't, I'll have to actually make up a screwed up one in order to get that error. Uh, if you run across it, there's, there's a couple of them, you know, just get on CryDev and, uh, ask me and I can help you out because believe me, I've run across every error that you're going to be able to throw at me, but you need to be able to, uh, see that system console I mean if you don't toggle the system console you won't have any idea what's going on you gotta be able to see that um, I would get into the user preferences and I would give it more uh, more cash or whatever uh, give it more lines to save that you can scroll back up to um, but what we're mainly concerned with is right in here what the resource compiler throws out at us. Anyway, that being said, um, we are going to add a uh, human meta rig. Uh, Blender comes with an add on. It's called Rigify. It's pretty cool. Uh, and it gives you a fairly complete rig to mess with. Now, as you can see, it's pointing in the wrong direction. Do not just uh, add the rig and go, okay, I'm going to spin it around to where it's facing in the right direction. You can't do that. The uh, object space, armature space, bone space, it is all funky. And I'm about to show you what's going on. Now that we've added our uh, human rig here, we're going to go to edit mode. Everything's still selected. We're going to rotate it on the Z axis 180 degrees. Now, according to that, everything looks copacetic. When you go back into object mode, if you go down here where it's got global, local, gimbal, normal, and view, click on gimbal. That's the object's uh, local space there. Okay. Now, when you do that, go to pose mode, and uh, you can see that our axes and everything are kind of what? Y is up now. X is what? <laughs> you know. Uh, this is the reason why it took so daggum long to get this to work. Um, 
I was trying to get the information from the bones. I just I knew that I could do it. I knew I could do it, and I ended up uh, just wasting a bunch of time. Uh, not completely, but I did waste a bunch of time. Um, that's okay, though, because we get our weight map information and our bone structure from the bones. I mean, it is, it is necessary. We do use it. We're rigging our mesh to this. Uh, you are going to make your mesh, make your your skeleton, and uh, before you do anything with cryblend, make sure it works perfectly because it's going to be hard to undo the cryblend stuff. I mean, yeah, you can go in through there and delete it, but when you get a skeleton that's this uh, complicated, I mean, we've got all the phalanges in the bone in the fingers here, okay? And when you do that, it's going to be hard to get rid of some of the stuff that's about to happen. Well, anyway, we'll go ahead and uh, parent our little plane there to our skeleton. We'll give it automatic weight. And uh, just like the uh, skeleton, the default skeleton for Cryblend, you know, that you've got to export for your. I don't even remember what the heck it's for anymore. Uh, but we'll just get rid of everything but the hips. Alright. We'll weight map it, weight paint it, whatever. Uh, give it a complete one. Back to object mode. Now, after you're that far with it, now, before you do anything else, go ahead and add your armature and your mesh your render mesh, add it to a cry export node. Call that rigify skeleton. Alright, and I'm gonna go ahead and save that out. Overwrite that. Uh, you I'm gonna include this blender file and the animation blender file in with the cry blend. So this this Cryblend update is going to be a little bit larger, uh, but it's going to have the Cryblend add on in it plus a couple of Blender files. Now, the reason why you're going to need more than one Blender file, okay, one of them, this first one here, is going to be for the bind pose for what we're about to do. Um, like I said, we, we're getting our information from multiple places. And, uh, when we go to adding our keyframes for each of the fake bones, things are going to get really funky. And if we try to export our base mesh and skeleton from our file after we've added our keyframes, everything is going to be completely foobard. So you're going to want to do this as soon as you get everything rigged up. Everything is beautiful. It's sexy. You love it. It makes you drool. Alright, then we'll go ahead and add our fake bones. Now, I was going to uh, just leave it at add a cube, name it the same name as the bone, parent it to the armature with the bone, you know, parent it, that's just, wow, that was too much, you know. Uh, I tried that, I did it a couple times while testing this, and it took way too long. So, I went ahead and gave us a little button here that says add fake bone. You click on it and it auto magically adds in a fake bone at the head of every bone at the proper location for our rotation and location. And uh, if you look here it makes the uh, makes the cube, names it, parents it to the armature under bone under the proper bone. Now, you can scale these as long as you apply the scale for like to see the, the fingers here. You know, that, that's way too large. You can scale it down so you can see what's going on, but you have to apply the scale. You cannot rotate these things. If you rotate them, say you get tempted to go ahead and make this one, you know, go down the Z -ax their X axis like the docks. Do not do it. Don't do it. If you do that, the export's going to be messed up. You are not going to be happy. I won't be happy because you'll be asking me why. Um, I can't do anything about that at this moment. 
Uh, it's a miracle that I've gotten this far with it and that it's working. That being said, after you've added this, done whatever you have to do to uh, to make it to where you can see it. Now, I chose two centimeters. Oh, I almost pulled a no-no there. Uh, I made the boxes or the cubes two centimeters in in width because for a regular bone, you know, that seems to work out fine. Um, after you get this far with it, save it out. Alright. Just, uh, you can name it whatever you want to name it. It doesn't matter. And I know this is going to be a big hassle for some of you, but this is how we got to do it. All right, this is free. I mean, we're using Blender. That's free. We're using this. This is free. So uh, I'm, I'm sorry. You know, this is this is just it for the time being. Uh, just save it out. You know, name it Bind Pose or Static Pose or whatever you want to name it. That way, you've got it to refer back to after you get through with your animation. Um, now, after you've gotten this far, you've saved it. Just go ahead and uh, hit A a couple times until everything's selected. And as you can see, our little fake bones, they are, they're orange. They're not part of the cry export node, but that's okay. Go on up to cry export, uh, cry blend menu. We'll export it to the game. And uh, I don't know if it's automatically going to be the CHRCAF for you, but that's what you need to toggle, untoggle, whatever. Uh, I haven't taken the time to fix that. I should have that set up to where if you choose one, the other one's deselect, but uh, I'll mess with that later. Uh, click on export to game, and uh, the more complicated the mesh, the more complicated the skeleton, the longer it's going to take. I'm sorry. Open up your system console. Look, do we have any errors? No, we've got one warning. What's the warning? Uh, the material does not fit naming con conventions that's fine I'm not worried about it uh, you will need to pay attention to that later I have noticed that some people have problems with that because they're not adding in the material physics or they're not putting the library and material slot numbers properly um, that's going to be a cleanup thing uh, I do plan on making the exporter automatically uh, setting up your library and slot numbers um, but by the time we get there you'll know what's going on uh, you'll have done it enough to where it's not really going to be that big of a deal but anyway now that we've done that uh, we'll come on over here uh, and as you can see there's my funky L doing his little thing uh, I love that thing that was just completely freaking awesome and we'll go to our rigify skeleton go ahead and open him up uh, and as you can see, you zoom in here, we have a Rigify skeleton from Blender in CryEngine. Yay, wow, awesome, says you. That, that's all fine, well, and dandy. I probably could have done that by hand. Yeah. Well, alright, now. This is going to uh, conclude this part of it because in order for you to get animations, follow the documentation, okay, when we go to do the next part, but I'm going to go ahead and set it up to where uh, it's already here so we don't have to wait on me to do that. But uh, doing it like this, if you follow what I've said, then you should be able to use the Rigify skeleton to do you know to go ahead and build yourself a basic mesh he's the right height um, now I don't know if the skeletons exported from blender are gonna work with the stock animations but I mean there's nothing stopping you from trying I haven't exported a weapon yet either I don't I don't know how I haven't uh, I haven't gone that far with it. I don't know what's going to be involved in that. I know I'm going to have to come up with some more helper objects to add in for it. Um, but for 
right now, you know, I mean, you, you, the animation works, the, the skeletal system works. I've just exported a Rigify skeleton from Blender into CryEngine 3. Um, the weight maps work, everything works. I mean, there, there's a lot of bones here. I mean, that's a lot to work with. Now, the awesome thing is, is you can get online and find motion capture files, the BVHs. Uh, let's see here. Have I? I don't know. I'll have to give that a shot and see what's uh, involved in that. But I mean, there, there's a plethora of motion capture files out there for everything that you could want to do. Um, I'll have to look into what it's going to take to convert that over or I mean you should be able to import that and the skeleton you get from that apply inverse connect apply IK to your skeleton you know uh, bone to bone and actually be able to get your animation to work um, but anyway that's it for this one uh, like I said, this is it's pretty freaking cool. I mean, it's and not making you add a fake bone for every joint, placing it exactly where it needs to be. I mean, I don't know if you can imagine trying to do that or not, but that that would be kind of a yeah, that wouldn't be fun. But it it, it does it automatically for you. I mean, uh, this is going on a hundred bones and it took just a couple of seconds to do it uh, alright I need to shut up because I need to get that set up and I'll see you on the next tutorial I hope that this wasn't confusing um, I'm trying my best here uh, I, I want you guys to be able to use this and do something really kick ass uh, Crytech from or Crydev anyway from their Facebook page there was a mentioning of a contest and uh, I want to be able to enter it and I'm sure you do too and if you can do this I mean we ought to be able to come up with some pretty badass stuff um, anyway I'll let you go for now and uh, I guess I'm going to upload this while I'm working on the next one bye for now